So in this video we're going over rolling friction or rolling resistance and we're going to talk about how you get come to these equations and then we're going to go over a short example problem with a guy trying to push a car. So if you find this video helpful hit that like button and please subscribe. So say we have this disc here and it's being it has this weight w and it's being pushed with a force p well the normal force because um, these two objects aren't perfectly rigid the normal force is going to be offset somewhat at a certain angle theta from the um, line of action of w if they were perfectly rigid the normal force and the weight would line up and there would be no rolling resistance but because there is um, there is some deforming happening when these two objects are placed against one another this normal force is going to be offset and it's going to have a component that's in the opposite direction of P. So this force P is going to be the minimum force needed to start rolling this um, disc or ball or whatever it may be. Just like in um, when we're using, when we're dealing with dry friction, you have some force F that's equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. Well, that, um, force is going to be the minimum force required to start moving that object. Just like this force P is going to be the minimum force that is needed to push this object. So you have, when you multiply, or when you sum moments about this point O, you get this equation. And because this angle is going to be pretty small, especially for really rigid objects, cosine of theta is going to equal about one. And so we can say P approximately equals the weight times by a which is we call the coefficient of rolling friction divided by the radius of the disk so this coefficient of rolling friction is actually a distance in this case and it is the distance from the line of action of w to the contact point of n on the rate on the outside of the disk so that is how you get this equation and now we're going to go over this example problem where this man is trying to push this car that weighs 2600 pounds the center of gravity is right here which is two feet away from the front tire and five feet away from the back tire um, the coefficient of rolling friction is half an inch this guy is pushing at five and a, or two and a half feet off the ground and the diameter of the tires are two 0.75 feet. So what we need to do is we need to find the normal force of each of these tires or rather the weight that they are pushing down on the ground because the center of gravity isn't uh, exactly between them they are going to be carrying a different weight each. So the first thing we need to do is we need to draw our free body diagram of our car and something like this. It's a rough sketch of it, but that is it. And then we have our force P here pushing on it. We have our weight of gravity point, or weight point down with 2,600 pounds. Um, we have our rolling resistance, resisting the forward movement, we'll call it F sub R, on each tire. And then we have each tire is um, supporting part of this 2,600 pounds. And we need to figure out how much of it is on each tire because our center of gravity isn't between, isn't exactly between A and B. So each tire or each set of tires on the front and back are going to be carrying a different amount of weight. So we will, we know that the normal force isn't going to be directly um, in the y direction if we call straight up the y direction and this the x direction but um, to be able to find how much each tire is carrying we can say say that it is um, so we'll call this normal force at B and the normal force at A and because we just need to find out how much each tire is supporting from this 2,600 pounds. We don't need to include this force P in it. 
Um, so if we sum moments about a point, one of these points, we can figure out what um, each of these normal forces are. So first, let's sum moments in about point A. And it is in equilibrium. It is not, the force P is going to be like the tipping point where it's going to not be moving, but just almost moving. Um, so we know that this is, this distance is two feet and this is five feet. So this uh, 2,600 pounds is two feet away. So it is, we have 2,600 times by two. And we will say the positive moment is counterclockwise um, with the right hand rule. So this is going to be a negative moment. So we'll put a negative right here. And then the normal force at B is going to be our other force. It is going to cause a positive moment. And so we'll say that normal force at B, it is seven feet away. So we'll multiply by seven. Solve this out and you get that the normal force at B equals um, 742.9 pounds. Now we can sum forces in the y direction and figure out what the normal force at A is. So we have the, the normal force at A plus the normal force at B, which we found is 742.9 minus the 2600 pounds. So solve that out and you get that the normal force at A equals 1857.1 pounds. All right, so now we know how much each of these tires, how much weight each of these tires is carrying. So we, these will be our W's in this equation. And then we can sum, then we can plug it into this equation and solve for that force P. Remember that each of these normal forces is the set of the front tires and the set of the back tires. So um, each of these, this normal force comes from both front tires and this normal force would be come from both back tires. So we're kind of acting like there's only two tires here. So now we can set this equal so we know that P approximately equals um, our weight at, we'll start with A, we said that that was 1857.1 multiplied by A, which it was given to us in inches. Um, since this is a half an inch, um, multiply it by one over 12, we get that half an inch is one over 24 feet. And then we divide all this by the radius of the tires. We were given that it was 2.75 feet is the diameter. Half of that is 1.375 feet. So there's the front tires. This basically, all this equals F sub R in the front. Now we're gonna do F sub R in the back. We have the normal force is 740, 2.9 multiplied by 1 over 24 again and divided by 1.375 and then plug that all into your calculator and you get that P equals about 78.8 pounds so you have to push if the only thing resisting movement on this car was the rolling friction force, it would have to be pushed with 78.8 pounds of force. And it's not super realistic, but it is applicable. And so because of the all the variations that can come in um, calculating A experimentally, changes in rigidity and temperature and um, just slight um, errors of calculation, rounding, uh, it makes A kind of impractical to use. So 
rolling resistance really isn't used that much in engineering but you'll probably come across it across it in your classes so this is how you do it if you have any questions or suggestions you can leave them down in the comments and i will reply to them also down in the description are some links to amazon teespring where you can buy some merch from student engineering and that helps me out a lot if you're new to this channel my name is preston palmer student engineering and my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering so if you found this video helpful hit that like button and please subscribe